Hi, I'm Rob D with Rob B from Property Hub. Are you new to property investment? Well, if you are, it can be so intimidating. But don't worry, we've got a checklist that you can follow to get you started. So to start with, we're going to assume that you're already clear about what you want from your investment. If you're not, then make sure you go and watch our completely free course on Property Hub University about setting property investment goals. You'll find a link to that in the description. We'll also assume that you know where you're going to be investing. So either you've got an area in mind or somebody sent you a potential investment in an area that you want to investigate. With all that groundwork in place, you can get straight on with step one, which is checking are the fundamentals there. You should have chosen an investment location that already has strong fundamentals in general, or somebody should have only be sending you deals that meet those criteria. So so the, in general, the economy is strong, there's lots of jobs, there's good transport links, things like that. But you need to make sure that the property itself has those. You can find properties that, for example, are miles away from any kind of transport links. And if your tenants are going to be the kind of people who want to use those to get to work, that's going to be a problem and it's going to affect your rental demand. So you might see a property that on the face of it looks like it's available at a really good price, but if it's lacking those fundamentals, you will have trouble renting it out and it's not worth proceeding any further. Next on the checklist is to work out what the property is worth that you're looking at. So you may get an asking price. You should get an asking price if it's for sale, but it's just an asking price. It could be the fair value or it could be a bit inflated. You don't know, but follow these steps and you'll get a better idea of what the property is actually worth. So go to rightmove.co.uk and then click on the house prices section at the top. When you click on that, you'll see sold house prices. Follow that link and you'll see an area where you can type in the address. Type in the postcode of the area that you're looking for and then click on list view. Once you've done that, you'll need to set your filter. So click within quarter of a mile, last two years, because properties sold years and years ago aren't gonna help you too much now, and then click on the property type. So is it a detached property? Is it a flat, semi-detached, terraced, or other? Once you've picked your property type, it'll ask you for the tenure. Basically what this means is if it's a house, you would click freehold, and if it's a flat or apartment, you would click leasehold. And then you will get your list. And what you will see is properties within quarter of a mile, the price they were sold for, and the date they were sold for. And often there'll be pictures as well to see if that property is in a similar condition to the one you're purchasing. Now, if you don't get a big selection when you do your filter, you may want to extend the search radius to half a mile, but be careful. Half a mile away might not seem that far, but particularly in cities and towns, half a mile away can mean two very different areas. So it's always best to try and work with quarter of a mile if you can. Your next step is to go through this list and identify the ones that are similar to the one you're thinking about buying. So there are certain things that you can't filter for. For example, the number of bedrooms. That's going to be an important factor in what properties are worth. But that's not a filter you can choose. So you're going to have to go through that list and identify the ones that have the same number of bedrooms. Annoyingly, sometimes the listings don't say. So you'll either have to try and work it out from any other information that's available or just ignore it completely if you have to. There are other factors that you might only be able to get an idea of by looking at any photos that are present, like the quality of the property or the overall size of it. The data won't always be complete but use whatever is there, go through the list and just pick out the ones that seem like a close match. They are the closest comparables for the property that you're looking at buying. Having done that, you can then look at the range that those prices have sold for. When you're doing that, give the most weight to the ones that have sold recently because it's more likely to reflect current market conditions. And of course, give weight to the ones that are the most similar. If there's a limited selection, so you have to end up looking at sales from more than a year ago or properties that aren't quite the right match, be careful. You can still use them, but you just have to be aware that you can have less confidence in your opinion as a result. Having done that, it's a case of making your best guess about where your target property fits in the range of prices that you found based on the location, the size, the quality, and anything else that you can think is relevant. This is never an exact science. In some areas, there aren't enough transactions of a similar type to have much confidence at all. In others, there's a lot of good comparables, but whichever one of those is the case, is never gonna be an exact science. But as long as you're aware of that and you err on the side of caution, you'll probably be close enough to have a price that you can move forward with. The next thing you want to do is check out what the property you'll rent for. So of course, you want that number to be as much as possible, but you have to be realistic. So how do you find out what's realistic? Well, back on right move, click on rent and then click on property to rent. Once you've done that, once again, pop in your postcode and click on start search. Now, set your radius to quarter of a mile again, leave the price range section and put the number of bedrooms that your property has. So for example, if it's a two bedroom property, then click minimum two, maximum two. Then click on your property type 
houses, apartments, bungalows, you should know what it is. Leave when it was added to the site and then click include let agreed properties. That's really important because not only will you see what's listed now, but you'll also see what's been let. After clicking that button, click find properties. Having done that, you'll be greeted with a list of properties. Before going any further though, you can filter that list down a bit further. So go to the filters button and select don't show house shares, student accommodation or retirement homes. Unless of course, what you're buying is gonna be one of those. Now you've stripped out some irrelevant results from your search. You will still though need to go through and eliminate any short let properties because you can't do that with a filter. If you sort the list by highest price, these will normally come to the top because they'll be showing a high weekly rent. So you can just exclude those from your analysis. Having done that, the process is now very similar to when you were going through and look, trying to establish the capital value of the property. You just need to look at the properties in the list that are the most comparable to the one you're interested in. And you can include some that are a little bit different, but put less weight on those. You should notice that most properties with an active rental market, there's a fairly tight range from the most expensive to the cheapest by the time you've gone down to just looking at properties that are very similar to each other. Once you've established that range, then you just need to place your target property somewhere in that range. So should it be right at the top because it's of a better quality or at a better location? Or should it realistically be somewhere in the middle or towards the bottom? You want to err on the side of caution again, but you should be able to get a pretty good idea of what rent you can realistically hope to achieve. Next on the list is get an idea of how quickly these properties rent for. So you can do a few things to help you get an idea. First of all, calculate the ratio of let agreed properties to available properties. If you're seeing the majority of the properties on the list are let agreed, that could be a good indication that demand is strong. But to help you gauge that, check the listings to see how long each property has been listed for. If properties are still available and they've been listed for months and months, it may be an indicator that demand isn't that strong there. But be careful, sometimes letting agents leave properties on available to let even after they've let that property just to generate inquiries. So don't make too many assumptions on that, but it does help give you an indication. Another way you can assess demand in that local area, are the properties in that location being offered with incentives? So something like half price for the first month's rent indicates that demand might be a bit lower there. So if you're seeing lots of offers, it could be that things are a little slower. If you're seeing no offers, then it could be an indication that things are going quite well. But remember, this is all super useful and you should run through this checklist, but also call local letting agents to validate your research. And here's a sneaky tip that will help you with your research. Call as a landlord, first of all, and tell them that you're looking at this type of property in this area and what's demand like. Get them to give you information. Ask them as many questions as possible and mine them for all that info. But then, on another day, call back as a potential tenant and ask our deals available on what type of price they can rent the type of property you're looking at for. You might get two different answers. And the reality is the rent level's probably somewhere in the middle. So that sneaky little trick can really reveal quite a lot to you. So it's worth the effort of doing it. So now you've got an idea of how much you should pay for the property and how much you can rent it out for. Now you can make sure that those numbers work for you. And you can do that by putting together a basic cash flow. You can see an example of a very simple cash flow on your screen. You can put this together yourself using any kind of spreadsheet software, or you can just write it down and do a few simple calculations on your phone. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. The first thing you'll need to calculate is how much of your own cash are you putting into this deal? So the first and the biggest cost you're going to have is your deposit. So if you're using a 75% loan to value mortgage, which is very common, you're going to have to find a 25% deposit. So work out what 25% of the purchase purchase price or the possible purchase price is going to be. You're then going to have stamp duty. That's calculated on the purchase price and you can easily find a calculator that works that out for you. Making sure that if you have a property already, you put in the higher rate of stamp duty that applies to investors. And then you're going to have various fees. The most common ones being legal fees for the solicitor who's doing the transaction for you and broker fees for whoever's arranging your mortgage. You may already have spoken to a solicitor and broker and know what those fees are, but if not, you can just put in an estimate. Compared to the other costs, involved those probably are not going to make or break a deal add those all together and it tells you how much of your own cash you're going to be putting in so now you need to work out your cash flow how much money could you potentially making every month well start off with the rental amount how much rent are you going to get you should know that by now because we just taught you how then list your mortgage costs be realistic don't put the best mortgage product down because chances are you're probably not gonna get the best product out there. So be cautious when you work out the rate. And most people who do buy to let investments 
will use an interest only mortgage. If it's an apartment or flat, then you'll need to put costs in like service charges and ground rent. And if you're gonna have your property managed by another letting agent, then you need to put your rental management in as well. Most agents charge typically 10% plus VAT, but do check. After that, you will get your cash flow per month, which hopefully is pleasing to the eye. And from that number, you can work out your return on investment, which is basically the income you've made over a year divided by the amount you've put in to purchase the property. That will give you a return on investment. Now, a word of caution, you can add a lot more costs to this if you want. It depends on how conservative you want to be. You can add things like insurance, void periods, maintenance. The list can go on and it's up to you which you select and which you don't, but we've taken you through the essential ones. So are you happy with the numbers that you're seeing? If not, then back to step one with another property. You've eliminated that property as a potential investment. And that's not a waste of time. That's a very valuable exercise to have gone through because you could be saving yourself from an expensive mistake. But if you are happy with the numbers and you're happy with the property, then it's time to make sure that you're in a position to proceed. So firstly, an obvious check, do you have enough cash? Do you now know how much cash you need to put into this deal? Do you have that? And do you have enough left over that it's not gonna put you in a very tight position if some of the costs end up being higher than expected, or if the rent doesn't start coming in straight away, or if there's another unexpected expense somewhere else in your life? You need to make sure not just that you've got the cash, but you're not cutting it too fine. The other thing you'll want to be confident about if you're using a mortgage is that there are lenders who will lend to you for this property. This is where it's a good idea to have a quick conversation with a mortgage broker. They don't need to look into the case in detail, but if you give them some basic information about you, and some basic information about the property, like where it is and the size and the type of property, they should be able to give you an indication of whether there'll be loads of options available to you, or if there'll be some, or if for some reason it's a complete no-go. This is a step that's well worth doing because you'd be surprised by how many properties may seem to you to be perfectly good investments, but for some reason you're unaware of, goes against the criteria of most lenders, leaving you with very few options and having difficulty getting a mortgage. So that one conversation can save you a lot of time and expense down the line. The final point on the checklist is to make your offer. Now it can be much more than just handing a number to an estate agent. And as a property investor, if you understand how to negotiate, you're gonna be in a much better position. Now, luckily, we've got a whole video on negotiation, which includes some really advanced techniques that you can take advantage of. We'll link to that video at the end, and you'll find a link in the description below. But remember, plenty can go wrong after your offer's been accepted. There's a lot you need to go through before you complete. But that's a whole different video. So that video will be out soon. So if you don't wanna miss it, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And as soon as it's released, you'll be able to watch it. So now you've got your checklist, but don't you be missing any steps out. Nope, and there's one final step as well. Subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the bell while you're at it.